As always, please raise your hand and I'll call on you. Let's get started with Tyler Donahue, 247. Go ahead. Hey, Chuck, how are you today? Good, Tyler. How are you, buddy? Doing well. Thank you for your time. Um, just since they got into your program, whether it was back in January or, or this su past summer, which freshmen from this 2023 class are you particularly really impressed by the strides they've made you know, within your within your realm of work? Um, yeah, since they got taken a, as a whole with all the class, I mean, I think it's pretty apparent with the with the progress that Tony Rojas has made since he's been in the program. Uh, dating all the way back to January, he came in as a freshman who was sub 200 pounds in his body weight, and he's worked himself all the way up to 227 pounds. Uh, he's putting some good time in on the field for us, so really happy with the strides that Tony's made. Uh, I think Elliot Washington is another one who's he's got a lot of talent when it comes to strength and strength, speed, performance as a performance athlete. Uh, Elliot's done an outstanding job. And then a couple of the other guys who ended up coming in late in the summer. Um, KV on Keys is one who's doing a really good job for us uh, that you guys haven't seen a whole lot of. He spends most of the time on the uh, developmental squad. But I like KV on Keys a lot. Um, Ty Blanding is another young defensive tackle who showed up in the summer, um, probably undersized uh, coming in, but he's made excellent strides. He's, he's put on anywhere from 15 to 20 pounds since he first got here, done a great job with his body composition. His body fat is down a little bit over 5%. Um, and he's strong and does a really good job for us. So just a couple guys off the top. Go to Audrey Snyder with the athletic Greg Pickle. You're on deck. Hey, Chuck. Thanks for doing this with us today. Um, I wanted to ask about Drew Aller. Uh, he's somebody that I know with quarterbacks, it's a bit of a different deal, but obviously he stayed here for most of this summer um, because of the strength training program. How have you seen Drew kind of develop and what's your satisfaction level uh, with him? I'm very satisfied. Um, you know, when it comes to, you know, Drew and Bo came in at the same time. And I think I've told you guys this before, Bo had a much more extensive performance background and his training background so his training age was higher uh, than Drew when he first came in, which is good and bad. You know, he definitely has his advantages. But at the same time, with Drew coming in with such a young training age, he's pretty much exploded in all areas. He's done an outstanding job getting his body, body weight up. You know, he's playing at 235 pounds right now, which increases his durability for us throughout the season. Uh, his power numbers, all the metrics in the weight room, are exponentially up from what they originally were. Um, speed is another area that it's a work in progress. That's an area we're going to really dial in, continue to dial in on for him. And he knows that. We talk about that all the time. But I'm really happy with Drew. And yeah, the quarterback game, is it's the, that position is a little bit different. Um, there are different areas of thoughts out there amongst people in my profession. But um what I like about Drew is Drew doesn't shy away from any type of work, you know, re regardless of the type of training we're doing in here or out on the field. He, he wants to, he wants to train heavy. He wants to train hard. He wants to train aggressive and he lets me train him that way. And I love that. He doesn't kick. He doesn't buck. Um, I love it. So I'm, I'm super happy with Drew. Let's go to Greg Pickle on three and Johnny McGonigal. You're on deck. Coach, what is the job of the strength staff during this bye week? Not just Monday through Wednesday or Thursday, whenever the coaches finally hit the road to recruit, but Thursday through Sunday and Saturday then to make sure these guys are ready to go for games. You talking about specific to the bye week? Yes, correct. Specific to the bye week, so we get a little bit more, um, a little bit more hands on, a little bit more face time uh, with the guys than what we normally would during the during the regular season weeks. Um, but our job is development. It always is and always will be, regardless of the time of the year. You know, we still see the guys, the developmental guys, three times a three times a week. We'll get to see the travel guys three times a week as opposed to usually two times a week during the end season. Um, so it just depends on where you are, where the buy falls within the season, how aggressive we're going to be. Um, Luckily for us, knock on wood, we've been we've been fortunate from an injury standpoint, from an overall health standpoint. 
So we're approaching this week um, fairly aggressively. We're we're gonna we're gonna bank some work this week uh, that I think will pay dividends for us down the second half of the season. Let's go to Johnny McGonigal, Penn Live, Ben Jones. You're on deck. Chuck, thanks for your time. Really appreciate it. Um, Thank you. I, I want to ask you about the the tush push, the the quarterback sneak. I know there's a lot of technique uh, that goes into that with Drew and the O line, but you know, when you see a play that's strength on strength like that, seeing guys get that kind of push, is that a point of pride for you? There's no doubt about it. Some of my favorite runs are the ones where it's yards after contact. And when we get those three, four, five O linemen pushing Katron, pushing Nick downfield for the extra five to 10 yards. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. As a strength coach, I take a lot of pride in that. I take a ton of pride for, for my uh, four assistants on staff with me. You know, Tyrone Smith, Jeff Earls, Alvin Futrell, John Flurry. Um, yeah, we, we would be we'd be lying if we said we didn't take a little extra pride in those reps. Go to Ben Jones, statecollege.com, and Seth Engel, you're on deck. Hey, Chuck, I uh, appreciate you. Stash is looking fresh today. Um, appreciate you, Ben. Um, I completely forgot what my question was. Um, was it about my mustache? He- yeah, and it wasn't about that, but you got so distracted by your face. Um, <laughs> when it comes to a weight, you talk about Drew being 235. Everything in football is so specific that that number is not an accident. When you go through your process of a guy who's in the program and you go, this is what we want you to be at, how do you settle on what that number is? Well, it's fluid. You know, that number is constantly changing depending on where they are, their maturity level. Um, their frame, there's a lot of different factors that go into that. Obviously their body composition, you know, their, um, their fat to mass ratio. Um, it just depends. It depends on what we think Drew or any other guy on the team can operate most efficiently at on Saturdays for us. And with Drew right now, his range is anywhere from 234 to 239. That's kind of where we've settled on for him with this first year. Now, that that number could stay the same going into his third year next year. And to be honest with you, it probably will stay close to that range because he's a naturally big kid. But between now and next season, this time next year, we're going to work, continue to work on that body composition, getting his body fat down so that he becomes a more fluid and more efficient athlete for us. So it changes constantly. There's a dialogue between myself, Coach Franklin, Leanne Loudon, who's our lead nutritionist. Um, there's constant dialogue between the three of us, the position coach. And then it also depends on the performance of the individual on the field. Um, you take an offensive lineman like Olu or something, just for example, if, if we're noticing he's getting more pushback than what he has in years past, well, then his number is going to change. We're going to probably increase it five to 10 pounds so that he can anchor down a little bit more against uh, some of those bull rushers. So it's it's constantly evolving. That number is by, is by no means stationary. Let's go to Seth Engel with the Collegian. Daniel Gallen, you're on deck. Chuck, I've noticed the three defensive end looks um, over the past couple of weeks. Um, it also looked like, you know, some of those defensive linemen have put on some weight in the offseason, how do you find that balance for a D lineman to play both inside and out? Well, I think I think it depends on your scheme. It depends on again. It goes back to communication and dialogue with your coordinators. I have a really good feel for what Manny wants to do up front within the defense and what he expects and what the expectation is from a movement, uh, strength, a power standpoint for those defensive ends. Um, so I think I think first it starts with understanding, you know, how those guys fit within the overall scheme of the defense. And first and foremost, we've got you got to have defensive ends who can move in this league. Uh, yeah, you want them big, but if you can't move, you're not going to be able to win in this league or any other league. Um, so we're never going to sacrifice movement first and foremost. You know, chop is unbelievably explosive. Denai is unbelievably explosive. Adisa. Um, but then they also got to have the ability to anchor down in the run game whenever they need to. So I think it's putting on mass the right way 
which is through your training in here, paired up with proper recovery habits, especially in the nutrition area. And our guys have really taken to that and they, they listen to us, they trust us. Um, so it's just been a good concerted effort. It always makes it easier at any position when you have guys like Chop, like Adisa, like Deny, when you have competition at a position and the standard is so high, it, it, it makes my job not not easier, but it, it gives me a lot more help. There's no doubt about that. Let's go to Daniel Galen, 247. Andrew Clay, you're on deck. Uh, Chuck, uh, sticking on the defensive ends at this point, um, you know, Jameel Lyons is someone who came in over the summer um, and we saw him get on the field early. It seems like he's putting himself in a position to potentially burn that red shirt this year. What have you seen about him as he's since he's arrived in terms of the work that he's done? And when you look at his future with his frame, his ability to add some weight, I mean, do you see him staying on that edge or is there flexibility with him in the future? Well, I'll start by saying Jamel has been a great surprise. I always knew Jamel was was talented coming out of high school. Obviously, that's why he's here. Um, but his strength, his overall strength, his total body strength is surprisingly uh, very, very good for his build because he does have a long, lengthier build at this point. Um, he's got a ton of room for mass. He weighs 251 pounds, which you look at him and you're – he, he looks like a 240 pound defensive end. Um, he's going to be able to carry as much as 265, 270 pounds if we want him to, if it doesn't come to, at the expense of his movement. Um, really happy with Jamil in all areas. Super mature, handles his business, comes in the building, loves to train. Um, I'm excited to have an off season with him after the year because I think he's going to absolutely explode. Um, he, he's going to be in the mix next year, and I, I'm really happy with Jamil. What was the second part of your question again, Daniel? I'm sorry. Um, just with in terms of putting on that mass with him, you know, if you see him staying on the edge, or if there's flexibility with his future, he, he he's one of those gifted guys where genetically he could go either way. Um, but we recruited him here to be an end, so we're going to plan on him to be an end. Uh, but his growth potential is, it's high. You know, he, he's going to be able to put on a ton of mass. So I'm excited for him. I think diet is the biggest area that we're going to have to dial in for him. I just think like most high school kids, when they come out, they're not used to eating the way that a, that a high-level athlete needs to. And he's, he's learning that. He's taken to that. And he's, he's put 15 pounds on since he's been here already in a short amount of time. Um, and that's, that's while we're playing football. So he's going to explode in the off season. Let's go to Andrew Clay and then T Frank. Coach last year, coach Franklin had made a comment about undersized defensive tackles, um, and guys wanting to play small. How personally did you take those comments? I know someone like Hakeem Beeman said he took that very personally, but how personally did you take those comments? I don't take it personal. You know, I understand. I'm with these guys all the time. And I know exactly what coach means when he says that. So I don't think it was a slight on anybody. I don't think it was a slight on. Um, I, I just, yeah, I don't. My interpretation of it was we need to be heavier. And we knew that going into last year. Um, but you also work with the frames that you have at that given point. We knew we needed to be heavier this year. And with the guys being another year into their development of the program, you know, we were able to finally get to where we needed to be. Um, you know, it, interior defensive line is a tricky position because you can get away with a lot through movement, but you are going to be challenged by some of those teams within your conference who you just need size and you just need to be robust in the middle. Um, and that was problematic for us last year, but I think I think it's great that coach addresses it. Um, now I, I would no, I didn't feel slighted in the bit in the least bit. Let's go to T Frank and then Joel Haas. Uh, Chuck, always appreciate talking to you. I'm curious about contact balance. Where does it come from, and how do you help taller athletes create that balance through contact? 
contact balance, well, overall athleticism. I mean, a lot of these guys, they're they're not here by happenstance. You know, they are here for a reason. And it's because they're really, really good athletes. And part of athleticism is your balance and your ability to stay on your feet. We tell guys at the very least, you know, athleticism, athleticism for most people is your ability to stay on your feet. You can't help the team on the ground. It's been like that forever. If you are on the ground, you are not helping Penn State win football games. So um, contact balance is, you know, we do certain drills during the offseason, but mostly it comes down to position-specific work that the guys do during practice. We work general proprioception with the guys, a lot of single limb movements, unilateral movements, because a lot of the game is played on one leg. So that's definitely a heavy emphasis within our program. Um, but you know, in the dynamic fashion that the, they have to rely on that skill out there on the field, it's hard for us to replicate in here. It's hard for us to truly replicate out there in a training environment on the field because of the nature of contact. So these guys are great athletes coming out of high school. I think it continue, it just continues to develop for them on the practice field most of all. But it doesn't hurt. You know, we try and prep them as best we can from a strength and power standpoint on a single limb uh, to help with that. Let's go to Joel Haas with the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette and then Audrey, you're on deck. Hey, Chuck, um, I just wanted to ask about Caden Saunders. We got to talk to him a couple of weeks ago after practice, and he said that when he first got on campus, he was focused on putting on a lot of muscle and weight, but he felt like he lost his speed. And then he said this year he felt like he was able to regain that speed while maintaining that weight. Um, and I guess I just wanted to know if you would agree with his assessment of himself and what have you really seen from him from a, a strength standpoint? Yeah, I think I think what Caden ran into and a lot of kids coming out of high school run into this, um, they get so consumed with, again, that weight number. Well, I've got to be 185 pounds to play as a div Division One wide receiver. Well, Caden's frame is smaller than most guys. Um, and everybody, his entire life, people have been talking about him. Well, you're smaller. You got to get your weight up. You got to get your weight up. Well, yeah, you guys got to get their weight up, but it can't come at a cost. And I think Caden got so consumed with hitting a certain number out of high school that by the time he ended up showing up at Penn State, you know, he was overweight for his position, um, which cost him in the speed department. So his entire first year was really getting him to be the efficient player that he was back in high school um, and getting his speed back. So we dialed in on that his first year. And that once we got his body composition leveled out after that first year, we've been able to really dial in on his speed. And, you know, he's, he's showing product or he's producing now on the field. So I'm excited for him, excited for his future. You got time for two more, Audrey and then Ben. Audrey, you're muted. There we go. You got me now? Yep. Gotcha. Um, we've heard a lot about Olu this year and, you know, trying to work through load management with him reps-wise. Um, how have things gone for him in your aspect of the program? They've been great. You know, Olu has been a professional with me from day one. Um, you know, he does everything we ask him to do. Um to answer the load management question, it's, we, we have a general plan for these guys before we go into the season. Now, the season is obviously you have to be able to shift gears and you have to be changed, be um, flexible, depending on week to week on the outcomes of the games individually for the players. But we have a good place in plan for Olu. Uh, thank God he's been healthy throughout. Uh, he's on a plan where... You know, he's a guy that we don't have to be super aggressive with. He's a guy that we are aggressive enough with so that he doesn't lose his edge from a strength and power standpoint. But at the same time, um, as far as him trying to make these crazy strength and power gains during the season, we don't have to do that with him. So it really comes down to a program design on Sundays and Wednesdays and throughout the week whenever we have time with them. Uh, and he's been great about it. He's a super professional, takes care of his body, comes in with us just about four or five times a week, um, does the extra stretch work, the extra soft tissue work, 
uh, he set himself up nicely. So really happy with Olu. Last question, Ben Jones. Chuck, the, the defense has seen way fewer snaps this time compared to the last two years where they've seen a lot of snaps. Is that translating in a way that you can tell, you know, five or six weeks into the year where these guys look you know, maybe a hundred or so snaps fresher? Um, you know, I'm trying to think. No, I mean, my, our guys are always consistent, to be honest with you, Ben. Like, our guys, when we train on Sundays, when we train on Wednesdays with the entire team, the travel squads, our guys have always been outstanding about it. So, to see a surface-level change, you know, do they look fresher? I, I don't know, because we've always been really good in that sense. Um, I know it's going to benefit us going down the road for this second half of the year. Um, but our guys have always been good with it. They've always attacked. They always know the expectation of what in-season is like. So just on a surface level, no, I haven't seen a big change, but I expect to here in the next few, in the next few weeks once we get into the second half of the stretch.